This is our Cyrus Expert where we saw some smoke last time uh, and I had to order a bunch of parts so hey, I've got those now and the, we saw that uh, the low current supply, the minus 42 volt supply was dead so I've, I've replaced those parts and uh, so we should see our voltages on the, on the strip reading OK now. So let's have a look at that. Now if we power up, we'll look at the... Uh, it takes a second or two for those rails to come up just because of the voltage doubler. Um, but we're reading plus 43 there and it'll probably settle about 44 and a half. And then if we look at the other side, we're already minus 44 and previously we had minus 1.6 there. So that's in a much more healthy place. That's that's where it should be now. And there's the other rail back up. It's reached its level now. So these guys are quite happy. Um, so that's the first stage of the problem. Um, the low current supplies back to back to health. Um, what I'm going to do is replace both sides, both sets of power transistors. Um, I wasn't quite happy that the parts that were in there were completely legitimate. There may be eBay counterfeits or something, you know, I've no idea where they where they came from. So I'm going to replace both sets. Um, but before we jump into that, what I normally do in this uh, kind of situation is uh, I replace the fuses with just a series resistor. And this is just a, it's a blown fuse and then I've got a, a resistor tacked across it. So before we put the transistors in, I'm going to put these in place and we should see on the the amplifier side of this, these uh, resistors should essentially see the same voltage uh, as the power supply side. That will mean that we're drawing no current, and therefore there's nothing funny going on that we haven't discovered yet. So we'll do that without the transistors in place. And then we'll put the transistors in place and uh, work through. So power's off. We'll just put these in place now. That's all good. And then if we go and measure, we know that we get sort of 44, 44, nearly 45 volts on the power supply side. On the amplifier side, I'm kind of expecting the same. So that's that's pretty much what we see there. So we know that there's no current being drawn from the amplifier side right now, which should be the case given there's no transistors installed. If we then go and look at the other uh, supply. Again, we've got no voltage drop across that resistor, so we're confident that uh, that's okay. What I'll do now is I'll go and replace the transistors on one side. And this side here was the side where the transistors were not blown before, so that seems like a good place to start. So I'll go ahead, solder those in, and then we'll come back and uh, make some measurements on that channel. And make sure it's up and running properly before we before we go ahead and put in the other side. Um, and another another reason for doing it one channel at a time, and also for using these resistors in place of the fuse. When you go to replace these transistors, you're looking at about twenty pounds for a set of these transistors. So if there's something that we've not discovered that's just going to blow them up then that's kind of uh, not, a, not a very good idea. So we try and limit that by having these series resistors and then just taking it one step at a time. Alright, so I'll go ahead and, and uh, load these uh, transistors now and we'll come back and see what that tells us. So we saw how bad the transistors were fitted previously. So these insulators are really a bit of a mess. And so we've really got to kind of take our time and... Uh, scrape these off properly. It's a messy job this. Um, so I need to spend a bit of time and uh, clean that up and uh, we'll put new washers on there so that the transistor are getting a good good contact on the body. Alright so we've got rid of these uh, old uh, thermal pads and they uh, cleaned up cleaned up the surface with some emery paper. And then we'll just fit some, uh, we'll use these new pads with our new transistors. And that's going to give us the best contact to the body there and get the heat out of these transistors. Alright then, so we've replaced these transistors. 
it was a bit of a faff of a job really, just given the mess that had been there before and uh, had to work around that. So there's a few wire mods in there to to make this thing go. Um, but anyway, they're in place now and uh, we're ready to power up. <clears throat> and of course it's always a nerve wracking time powering up after you've changed uh, parts like that. Um, there's always the danger, you know, if you've not caught everything then uh, the, the, the chances are you're going to make more smoke. <clears throat> and that would be a bit unfortunate. Uh, so, on the measurement side, I've got two DMMs this time, and this uh, this one here I'm using to measure the bias, and then this we'll just use as a general general probe. Um, so, you know, if we turn this thing on and the bias is high, then that's that's an indication right away that something's uh, still something's still not right. So we should just switch off quite rapidly. Um, and I'm expecting sort of hopefully something less than 20 milliamps, something less than 15, 20 milliamps. That would be safe. Um, it, it, the, the bias will obviously need adjusted given that we've changed these transistors, so uh, it could be a bit off. But um, anything higher than these kind of numbers indicates that we're still still got something to do. Uh, so anyway, uh, we can't put it off any longer. We've got to. Got to turn the power on, see what happens. Um, so, switch at the rear. Um, that obviously just puts the thing in the standby, and we, you know, it's a good sign that there's no current being drawn at that point. Um, only then, by turning on at the front panel, uh, does the you know the power amplifier stage start to switch on, and we should see some bias. There's a small delay once you press the front uh, button there. All right, so that's uh, creeping up about eight, eight, nearly nine millivolts. Um, so that's quite encouraging. Uh, there's, you know, there's no danger of any uh, any uh, smoke with, with current like that. And if we then go and we look at the power amp side of these resistors, where the fuse should be, I'm dropping about a volt there, and I'm dropping. About the same on that side. So we've got a volt and a 22 ohm resistor here. That's about 22 milliamps. So there's no, you know, there's nothing excessive here. That seems quite, uh, quite content. And we're also seeing that that bias voltage is dropping, which is what you expect. Once the amplifier starts to warm up and settle down, then uh, that voltage will stabilise. So I expect that to keep dropping. Uh, Let's just have a quick check on the the output. Um, that's good. There's no DC on that, so we're quite happy with that also. All right, that's good. That's the first stage there then. So our next job, we need to do this other channel, and that one's a little bit more um, a little bit more nerve wracking because we know that the one of the driver transistors was also gone. So we've replaced, or we're going to have to replace. Uh, more parts on this side and therefore there's more chance of something uh, not being caught or uh, for something to go wrong. So we'll, we'll go and load the transistors on that side and again we'll carefully turn that side on and see what uh, see what that tells us. Same routine on the other channel then. Uh, transistors are in now, the new drivers in and we've replaced the blown capacitors. And so we're just monitoring the bias again and ready to power up. So let's see what happens this time. All good so far. Let's see the front panel. And nothing's happening. So I've either got zero bias or there's something else to be found. Uh, so, okay, right, we'll have to dig into that a little bit more then. So after some probing and uh, investigation, what I found was that the driver transistor that I replaced is a slightly different package uh, from the one that was there before. And uh, so basically I had that transistor the wrong way around. And this is just the kind of thing that can catch you out, you know, and this is why I... I do this thing with the two resistors and uh, turn these things on stage by stage. 
Luckily, you know, nothing went uh, drastically wrong there, but uh, as I say, these things can catch you out and they can go very wrong. Anyway, so let's... Uh, I've, I've uh, yeah, corrected its orientation, so let's power up and see how lucky we are second time round. So that's the main supply on, let's turn on it front panel. Okay. That's pretty good, right? So it's maybe a little bit high, but that's fine. Well, you know that's adjustable. Um, so we'll trim that down once things settle. Um, but that that appears to be quite good. So let's just we'll measure our uh, a amplifier side of these resistors, and we're down another another volt, if you like. Um, which makes sense because we're now running two amplifiers and uh, so uh, that's where the extra current's gone so that's good. Now we're beginning to see our bias voltage drop so let's just see if we can adjust that. Um, ah, we can quite happily, that's good. Okay, so that's excellent then, we're in good shape here. So we'll let that settle and then uh, do the final final adjustments later on. So we're nearly finished then. The, the main stuff's uh, done, and so we just need to look at kind of general service stuff now. And uh, you know we're going to have our usual dry electrolytics. Um, if we just probe here, then here's one here reading uh, three and a half ohms, where we'd expect to be sub one. So we know that. Generally, most of the electrolytics here are going to need replaced. Um, so we'll go and do that. Change the resistors back out to being the fuse. And uh, we'll, we'll get the covers on and we'll maybe have a quick listen before we finish this one up. Alright, so we've done the general service stuff now. Any any capacitors that needed changed have been done. Uh, fuses are back in place and it's been sitting for a while, I've set the bias and it's sitting very stable there now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just quickly we'll put in a signal and have a look at the output on a scope um, just to make sure that there's nothing uh, funny going on. You know, Sometimes you can get some high frequency uh, crazy stuff going on if you've changed transistors and something's not quite right. So we'll just check that out before we put the covers on. So the scope's set up here and I've got an uh, input signal uh, via an attenuator and if I just wind up the, the level, the scope's on 10 volts of division and uh, that's as far as my source here can uh, take that. So I'm up to 30 volts on the peak there, looking at one channel on the yellow and then if I, I come in and uh, check on the other channel they overlap exactly, so that's uh, perfect, you know, the gains are all matched, everything's fine. And there's no high frequency stuff going on there, it's very, very stable, clean signal there, so everything's happy. So I think that's us then, um, just I'll put the covers on now and we'll maybe play some music through it, and uh, that should be us. So the unit's back together now and we're ready to have a listen, and uh, what I've got here is this is my passive preamplifier. Um, it's not really a pre-amplifier at all, it's an attenuator um, and it's essentially a stereo step attenuator and so that gives me very accurate uh, matching between the left and right channels uh, and of course when we're using uh, a power amplifier on its own we need some means to vary the volume so that's why we, we have this here. So let's power it up and turn up the volume and see what we have. Takes a second or two for it to uh, a power up the, the main amplifier, so there we go. Just what I had, but honey, now I'm 